In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O Heavenly King, comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of good gifts and giver of life. Come and abide in us and cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, only mighty, only mortal, have mercy on us. Only God, only mighty, only mortal, have mercy on us. Only God, only mighty, only immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in the heavens. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil let a mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for thou never in the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship and fight. have driven me into thy embrace more than friends have. Bless my enemies, O Lord, even I bless them, and do not curse them. Friends have bound me to earth, enemies have loosed me from earth, and have demolished all my aspirations in the stranger in worldly realms and an extraneous inhabitant of the world. Bless my enemies, O oh, Lord, even I bless them and do not curse them. Just as a hunted animal finds safer shelter, than an unhaunted animal does, so have I, persecuted by enemies, found the safest sanctuary, having been ensconced myself beneath a tabernacle, where neither friends nor enemies can slay my soul. Bless my They, rather than I, have confessed my sins before the world. Bless my enemies, oh, Lord, even I bless them, and do not curse them. They have punished me whenever I have hesitated. To punish myself, bless my enemies, oh Lord, even I bless them, and do not curse them. They have tormented me whenever I have tried to flee torment. Bless my enemies.
flattered myself. They have spat upon me whenever I have filled myself with arrogance. Bless my enemies. Oh, Lord, they will I bless them and do I curse them. They rather than I have confessed my sins before the world. Who has done me more good 
And who has done me more evil in the world? Friends or enemies? Bless my enemies. Oh, Lord, may then I bless them and do like a curse them. Therefore, bless the Lord, both my friends and my enemies. A slave curses enemies. For he does not understand, but a son blesses them, for he understands. For a son knoweth that his enemies cannot touch his life. Therefore he freely steps among them, and prays to God for them. Bless my Judge, Understanding the Vice of Passing Judgment by Yiromo Gregorios. How should we react when we become the victims of malicious gossip? Not only does a man who strives spiritually not suffer distress when so accused, but he considers his accusing brother to be a benefactor of his soul. Abba Zosimus said, one of the brothers who lived with me and had received the schema from my hands, having been well versed by me in goodness, said to me one day, Abba, I love you greatly. I replied to him, I have yet to find any person who loves me as I love him. For example, you say now, I love you, and I believe you. However, if something happens one day to displease you, you will not remain the same. In my case, however, whatever evil I might endure from you could not possibly stop me from loving you. After a short time, I don't know what had happened to him, he began to say many things against me. I learned all about it, but said within myself, he is the cauterizing iron of Jesus and was sent to cure my vainglorious soul. If a man be spiritually alert, he can gain as much from such people as he loses from those who flatter him. He is indeed my benefactor. I looked upon him as my physician and benefactor and said to those who told me what he had been saying, He knows only my visible shortcomings and just a part, not all of these, but my hidden failings are numberless. After a time, this brother encountered me in Caesarea, he approached and, as was his custom, embraced and warmly kissed me. I did the same, as though nothing had happened. 
for throughout the time that he was saying things against me, whenever he met me, he embraced me warmly, and I never held back or showed any resentment at all, even though I knew everything. This time, however, he fell to the ground before me, took hold of my feet, and said to me, Forgive me, Abba, for the love of Christ, for I have said many terrible things against you. I then kissed him and said to him, Rejoicing, do you remember, beloved of God, that when you said, I love you very much, I told you that I have yet to find any person who can love me as I love him? Let me tell you then that nothing of what you said against me has escaped me. I heard all that you said, to whom you said it, and where, and I never said that it was untrue, nor did anyone ever persuade me to say anything bad about you. Neither did I ever neglect to remember you in my prayers. The following is also proof of the love which I have for you. I once suffered a lot of pain in my eye. I thought of you, made the sign of the cross, and said, Lord Jesus Christ, by the prayers of this brother, make me well. And immediately I was cured. Abba Isaiah says on this subject, if somebody rightly or wrongly curses us or says malicious things against us, we must not contradict him at all, but rather keep completely silent with great humility. The spiritual person usually refrains from defending himself, provided, of course, that others are not being hurt by the slanderous talk. He waits for the equitable judgment of the great judge of all mankind. Particularly instructive is St. Basil the Great's reply to the accusations of Symblichia, a heretical woman. Because people unwittingly hate those who are better and love those who are worse, I hold my tongue, drowning in silence the shame caused me by your insults. I await the heavenly judge who, in the end, knows how to protect against every type of injustice. St. Maximus the Confessor tells us how to face our accuser. If a brother happens to be tempted and persists in insulting you, do not be driven out of your state of love. Even though the same evil demon troubles your mind, you will not be driven out of that state if, when abused, you bless. When slandered, you praise. When tricked, you maintain your affection. This is the way of Christ's philosophy. If you do not follow it, you do not share his company. The following incident teaches us that those who live their life without judging their brothers freely enter into the kingdom of heaven. Near a certain elder, there dwelt a brother who was somewhat negligent about the rules of monastic life. When the time came for him to die, several of the fathers were sitting beside him. At some point, the elder, seeing him departing from the body cheerfully and joyfully and wishing to edify the brothers who were present, said to him, Forgive me, brother. We are all aware that you were not very zealous in your asceticism. So how is it that you are making your final journey so eagerly? The brother replied, That is so, father. What you say is true. Nevertheless, since I became a monk, I am not conscious of ever having judged anyone. If I ever did have a disagreement with anyone, I immediately made it up with them the same day. And I plan to say to God, Master, thou didst say, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. The elder said to him then, Peace be with you, my child, for you have been saved without even a struggle. With these words, 
The brother peacefully surrendered his spirit to the Lord. He forgave and was forgiven. He judged not and was not judged. This monk, who was considered careless and who so easily attained paradise, can serve as an example to all of us. A reading from Abba Dorotheos, the practical teaching on the Christian life. Those who desire to be saved pay no attention to the faults of their neighbor, but are always concerned with their own, and thus they make progress. Such a man saw his brother sinning and sighed deeply, saying, Alas, he sinned today, for sure it will be me tomorrow. Do you see how secure he was in himself? How spiritually prepared? How did he immediately find a way to avoid judging his brother by saying, for sure it will be me tomorrow? He caused himself anxiety and concern about the sins which he was likely to commit. And this is how he avoided judging his brother. And he did not stop there, but put himself below the level of the man who had sinned, saying, He repents of his sin, but it is not certain that I shall repent. Do you see how this divine soul was illuminated? Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.